Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Hollow Point Firearms and today what we're going to be doing is going over uh, disassembly and reassembly of a very common firearm and this is the Marlin Model 795. Uh, it's a great little semi-automatic um, repeating uh, 22 long rifle. It's very very accurate. Uh, they've got a nice barrel on them, um, nice sliding action and very very accurate well shooting rifle for the price. They're magazine fed. They take a small magazine right in the bottom here. And I actually prefer this rifle over the Ruger 1022, believe it or not. Um, the Ruger 1022 in, uh, in, a, in a marksmanship situation to equal what this rifle is, um, they're very heavy. You know, if you want to get a 1022 that's super accurate and very reliable, you're going to have to go with a modified 1022 with a bull barrel on it and such. Um, they're nice rifles either way, but they're still, uh, uh, if you want a very accurate one, you're going to have to get one with a bull barrel, and that just adds weight to the front of the gun. Now, this rifle has a, you know, it's got a decent front end weight on it, but it's nothing like a modified 1022. The second thing that I really enjoy about this rifle over the 1022 is the magazine. The magazine on the 1022 actually seats inside of the rifle itself, and it's really in a, in a quick reload situation. It's a pain in the butt. Um, you actually have to push the button and reach inside and pull the little box mag out. With this one, um, it actually protrudes out of the bottom of the, of the stock just a little bit, and so you can get your hand on it um, and pull it out just like a regular magazine in an assault rifle or anything like that. So, Marlin 795, great great little firearm for the price. Um, you can get them for about 120 bucks right now. So one of the one of the cheaper ones on the market and I recommend the heck out of this. So if you're looking for a little ten, uh, looking for a little 22 long rifle to use for planking or even protection, maybe you've never bought a gun before you want to start small with rifles, I highly recommend the Marlin 795. Now Marlin doesn't pay me to say that, but as a gun guru, I'd love to give you guys some tips and uh, my opinions on certain rifles. And if you gave me a truckload of 1022s or two or three of these, I'd take two or three of these over the 1022s. So just a little FYI there for you. This one here is outfitted with uh, the tech sights, which are really cool. They're better than the uh, factory sights. The factory sights, the rear sight would mount up here on the barrel in this dovetail. And then your front's just going to be a post. The tech sights are actually like military style sights. So they're really cool um, for uh, adjusting if you want to adjust your, uh, adjust your windage and elevation. And then the front of the sight actually has the dovetails on both, or the leaflets on both sides. It gives you a nice picture window for getting that sight picture. So anyway, let's get started on disassembly. I used this, uh, this rifle here during an apple seed shoot. And uh, it's in high, high demand for a cleaning right now. So let's go ahead and get it disassembled and I'll show you how. <clears throat> Alright, so the Marlin 795 is a super, super easy rifle to disassemble. First thing we want to do is go ahead and make sure that the weapon is on fire. We want to pull our bolt to the rear, check and make sure it's clear, and it is. No magazine in the mag box. We're going to go ahead and drop the firing pin. And then from there, we're going to flip over here on the back side of the right or the bottom side of the rifle. And there's two screws right here: one for or one rear tang, one forward uh, lockdown screw. We're going to go ahead and remove those screws. As always, I mention it in every video: use a properly fitted screwdriver whenever you're doing any work on your firearms. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove those screws and then pull that screw out. And then to get it up off of the action, you're going to have to pull your magazine release forward just a little bit and then just work it up off. You're going to have to work it around the, the slide lock as well. Work it right off just like that. We're going to set that aside. That's your whole trigger assembly right there. In uh, in the trigger frame, so that's nice. And then we're just going to remove the stock from the action of the gun, just like that. So we'll take that and clean that up with some warm soapy water. Synthetic stock, those are a lot easier to clean. 
and now we're down to the meat and potatoes of the rifle right here. All right. All right. So our next step in the disassembly process is we have our action here, and our, our bolt. We our, our goal here is to get it broke down as far as we can to get it a good cleaning. So what we want to do is right here in the rear. There's actually a pin, and some uh, some different ones will, will be different, but for the most part, you should have a uh, synthetic pin here and or composite and what it's going to do is just push from right to left and we're just going to push that out of the rifle set that aside and then we should be able to just pull up on the rear of the this is all of the mechanical parts of the whole rifle right here so lift up pull back and all the mechanical parts are going to come right out all right now nothing in here should fall apart or fall out on you or anything like that you actually have to remove some pins to get anything to fall out but you always want to be delicate uh, treat these with uh, with care because they are a delicate component of your rifle there's a lot of thin metal parts that you don't want to bend or uh, modify in any way where it could uh, Im impact the actual uh, functionality of your rifle so we're going to go ahead and leave that just as it is what I'll do is take some degreaser and just spray that down real good give it a good brush and, and blow it off of the air compressor it'll be good to go All right. Let me grab a rag real quick here. All right, now at this time we've exposed our actual bolt or carrier, whatever you want to call it. So what we're going to do is go ahead and pull back on it just a little bit here, put a little bit of spring tension on it. Now I'm going to try to do this without reaching in front of you guys, but what I need to do is come around here to the front and get my finger in front of that, of that bolt carrier, all right? And what I'm going to do is just lift up on the front of it. Now by lifting up on the front of it, notice my left hand here, I'm going to pull the, the actual bolt handle, the charging handle, out from underneath it. So we're going to set that aside. And we're going to go ahead and remove, continue to pull up on the bolt until we get it loose. And then we're going to slowly let it pull out here. Keeping in mind, we have a long spring back here in the back. And that is the... Uh, return spring, the buffer spring. So we need to make sure that we don't bend that up too bad. Um, and then inside of that spring will also be our guide rod. So we'll keep that, uh, set that aside, and then here is our action, uh, or our bolt carrier with our firing pin. Now on this, your extractors are actually uh, mounted on the sides, right here. And uh, so we're not gonna remove any of that at this time, we're just gonna give it a good cleaning the firing pin actually lays in the bottom of the uh, of the carrier, just like that. And when it's pushed on the back, it pushes forward just enough to dent in the back of the casing to uh, ignite the round. So that's in dire need of some cleaning too. This whole rifle was nasty. I told you guys, you can lick my fingers and tail. It was dirty. We put about a thousand rounds through it. And uh, in the mitts, no field stripping or cleaning. Just keep, at, keep adding oil. And misfire adds more. <laughs> so it's pretty dirty. So anyway, guys, that is how you disassemble a Marlin 795. It's very straightforward and very easy to do. Um, and at this point now, I'm going to go ahead and clean it. And then I'll be back with you guys to show you how to reassemble. All right, guys, so we've got the 795 all cleaned up now. We're getting ready to reassemble it. Um, I have the carrier all polished up and cleaned up. So we've got that, and we've got our spring and our guide rod back together. All right, so this is the most tricky part of the whole reassembly of these guns because the spring is so long, and it's hard to get it in there. So this is the tricky part. Uh, so bear with me, and uh, we'll get it done eventually. So, um, and if anybody has any better luck doing it, please let me know. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by actually sliding the back of the spring into the back of the carrier. And then with the guide rod in, you can you can kind of guide it, guide this the guide rod or the spring to close down on the guide rod. Now the tricky part comes when you go to put it back in the gun, because you have to line the guide rod up with the hole in the back of the of the frame itself. And don't forget, put your charging handle back in before you seat it.
just like that. First time go. That'll never happen again. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, we got the guide rod back in uh, with the spring. We've got our, our uh, carrier, fire pin assembly, all that jazz back in, charging handles on. Our next step is to put in our mechanical parts. Now, you guys, uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you know my philosophy on lubrication. Guns don't need a lot of lube. They, some people seem to think they need a lot of lube. They don't need a lot of lube. Uh, lubrication in a gun is mainly to prevent uh, really, really harsh cleaning. Uh, it helps the carbon to stay uh, free from the weapon, um, and, but guns should not be stored with a lot of oil or dissolvents or anything inside of them because it degrades the coatings on the firearms and the actual uh, steel itself. So keep it to a minimum. I've already lubed up our uh, mechanism. Now I want to point something out to you guys about the Marlin 795 on the actual mechanism or mechanism assembly itself. Trigger, sear, uh, you got your uh, mag block and all that stuff. Right here on the side of the mechanism, you see this little tab here. All right, so this side doesn't have a silver bar. This side does have a silver bar. So the side with the silver bar actually has this little tab here. Now this one's bent up. That's because the owner of the firearm bent it up. All right, Marlin comes with this factory and it's bent down under or on top of the actual sear spring here. The reason why they do that is so that you can't dry fire the weapon without a magazine in. You actually have to have a magazine installed in the magazine well to be able to dry fire. And dry firing is not something that I encourage you to do with your firearms, but in a situation where you need to dry fire without a magazine, such as a shooting event or something like that, the way to eliminate that is to take a pair of needle nose pliers or a flat tip screwdriver and bend that up straight so that you can actually dry fire your weapon without a magazine in. Now another way that that comes in handy is in order to do a functions check to check the safety and reliability of your firearm, you would need to dry fire your weapon. That allows you to know if your trigger reset works and also if your safety works. So that's just a little FYI for you on that. All right. So at that at this time, we're going to go ahead and reinstall our mechanism assembly. We've got our little uh, stainless steel rod that runs uh, left to right on both sides of the front of the frame. We've got our little dog ears. We're going to slide that right up under that and bring our rear down just like that. Install our pin. All right. And then after that, all we have to do, I think this is it. Yep. Install the stock. And oh, wrong trigger frame. And our trigger frame. All right. Now just like when we took it out. Getting the trigger frame back in there just takes a little bit of finesse. You've got to get it over the slide lock first, or the bolt lock, and then we've got to get it over the magazine release. And it sets right back down in there. All right, we've got two screws, our tank screw and our forward screw. Forward screw is short, tank screw is long. So we're going to start the screws.
that's it guys that's the disassembly and reassembly of a Marlin 795 so if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comments below uh, until next time get out there shoot some guns be safe and most importantly have fun see you guys later